Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL query training session with Lan at Nostar. In today's session, we are going to see how we can store images in databases. So let's get started. Now there are two ways in which we can store image in a database. The first method would be to store an image as a where binary in the database. So where binary would be your data type. And the second method is to store the image location and on the file system. And then whatever is your front end application that can fetch the image location from the database table and then go to that uh, location and fetch the image and display the image on its application. Um, now storing images in databases is a little tricky and it is not much recommended because the images can be very big in size. So uh, storing the images can make your database volume very, very high. So it will take a lot of database space and then it will impact a lot of database operations um, because the database is occupying so much of space. The All the maintenance activities of the database would be impacted like restoring, backing up the database. All of them are going to take a lot of time. So the images, the high quality images, especially which are used nowadays, they have a lot of size they're really big and therefore it will not be recommended to store them directly in the databases uh, the preferred method is always to store the file location and then go to that location through your front-end application and then uh, fetch the image from that location but still there are ways in which we can store the images so let's just take a look at how we can do that um, using the first method storing it as a web binary so the first step for that is going to be to create a table with a column which has the size, uh, which has the data type as well binary. So let's do that. So let's create the table using the create statement. So create table, uh, let's call it images. Uh, I'm going to do it in the demo database. So I'm just going over there. Uh, let's make it dbo.images. And then we have to define the columns. So the columns are going to be one, let's have an ID column. Let's make it nullable for now. And the next column is going to be image column. And this has to be defined with the where binary data type, where binary max. And let's make it a nullable as well. So this is going to be the table. So the table or the column where you're going to store the image has to be of the of the data type where binary. So let's execute this query. And this table has been created. Now the next step after creating the table is to uh, insert that data in the table. Now I've got the data on my local system. Uh, I have it in this file location. So you can see I have in this folder C SQL images. That is my folder location. And this is the image that I'm going to store in my database in the table that I just created. So, so let's write the insert query. So insert into table name dbo.images values. Uh, for the ID, let's just pass one as the value. And then to fetch that image from the folder location, we have to write a select query. So select star from, and now we need to use a function called the open row set function. What the open row set function does is it creates an OLEDB connection. Okay, so you can use it for various uh, kind of connections, but the file system connection, we are going to use it to create a file system connection. So we, the open row set function will create that OLDB connection for us. So open row set, and then you have to uh, give brackets, and then you have to use a keyword called bulk. So bulk, uh, make sure that you're accessing the data from a file system. So when you write the bulk keyword, it tells uh, the database that you're trying to establish the connection to the file system. And then you have to provide the path for that file system. So it's going to be C. And then we had, oh, okay, let's go back and see what was the path. It's going to be C SQL images, C SQL images, and then the image name. So the image name is SQL and the image type is PNG, okay? And then you have to define another option, which is going to be single blob. So you have to write single underscore blob. Now writing the single blob means that the output from this file will be a single row set of the type where binary. 
Okay, so it, this open row set function enables you to read from all kinds of files. So you can read from a PDF file, from CSV files. Uh, if you're reading from a CSV file, let's say you and you want to collect the data as a wildcard, then you have to define something else as the data type. But when you want to read the data as the type where binary, then you have to define single blob because that makes sure that the data will be read as a where binary. And that is what is needed to store the image. So now we have read this and because we have a subquery, let's call it as T and then let's just close the brackets over here. So this statement should be able to insert or insert the image from the folder location on our local system to the table that we have just created. So now I'm going to execute this query. So once I execute this query, I will see one row affected. Now let's see what is inside a table. So if I do a select star from dbo.images and run this query, you would see that I've got some data in this IMG column, okay? Uh, there's no way to display it directly in SQL Server. You need a front-end application to see what exactly this means. So we are going to use it. We are going to display it using Power BI. Most of the time, the front-end applications are, uh, they can be on Visual Basic, they can be on C, coded through C or Java. So you can use that code to fetch the image. Now you have all the image data. The image is actually stored in this database in the form of this where binary, and that you can use to display on the front-end application. So we are quickly going to go to Power BI and display it uh, using, connect to this table on a SQL Server to Power BI and display this image in a report, okay? So I'm going to write some Power BI code. So if you're not interested, you can skip by a few uh, seconds, uh, but this is the Power BI desktop. For those who are interested, you will see many options here. One of them is import data from SQL Server. So I'm just going over here and I'm going to create a connection to my SQL Server database. So I'm going to write the uh, server string over here and I'm just going to say, okay, and it should be able to establish the connection over here. Okay, so you can see that the connection has been established. The databases in my server are being displayed over here. I'm interested in the table from the demo database and my table is going to be images. So I'm going to click on that. Now, once I click on that, you will get a, a preview of this table over here. So you can see that ID has a value of one and image in the image it is showing some binary value. So what we need to do now is we need to transform this data a little bit so that it is readable by power Power BI. So I'm going to click on transform data. Uh, so those who are familiar with Power BI would know these steps, but if you're not, it's okay. I mean, I'm just trying to display the image to make it easier for you to see what has been stored in the database. So once you go here in the transform window in Power BI, you will see that the image is of the kind of binary. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to choose this column and we are going to transform its data type from binary to text. So that is the first step that I'm going to do. As soon as I transform it to text, you will start seeing some value. Now the next step that I'm going to take, uh, uh, the next step that I'm going to take is to, I'm going to add a column, add a new column, and it is going to be a custom column. So I'm going to add a custom column over here. Now I'm going to call this custom column image. Okay, and I need to write a formula here to convert this web binary data into an image URL. Now this formula, um, so I've got this formula over here. I'm going to copy this formula from here and paste it to my Power BI window. So I am pasting it here. So this is double equal to, I'm going to just remove one equal to. So here what I'm doing is simply reading the image column and converting it into base64. So I'm just encoding it and converting it into an image URL. And then I'm just going to say, okay. And you will see that some yeah image URL has been created over here. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, save these changes. So I'm just going to close it and I'm going to say, okay, apply the changes. Once the changes have been applied, we will be back to the Power BI desktop window. 
and the model would be created. Okay. Right. Now I am going to go back to my data. So I have got the uh, the data over here. You can see I've got three columns now because I created one custom column. I'm going to the column that I created as a custom column. And then I'm going to change the data category over here to image URL. Okay. So this has been saved as image URL. Now the next step is to use this data into a a visualization so a simple visualization i'm just going to uh, use a table visualization over here so you can see that this is a table over here and you can add your data fields over here i've got the images over here uh, this is the column that we created image so i'm going to select that column over here and you can see it's very small but you can see that the this has been the image is displayed over here, the image that we had in our folder. So this is the same image. We had this image in the folder, in the folder, the SQL image. And now you can see that it is now here displayed in the Power BI. So it was successfully stored in our database over here. So it's just to verify that the image stored in the database can be displayed, can be used for display. So this is how you can use the open row set function to read the data, uh, to read an image from a file system and store it in the database as a where binary. Again, this is not the recommended method because it's better to store the file location and then access it through your front end application. But still, we should know how it should, how it can be done. And this is how you can store it. I hope that you found the video useful. If you did, then please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll talk soon. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.